Hello, I am Wanderer001, and this is my review of the Garmin NuviCam LMT HD. Now, each of those letters in the descriptive title of this particular GPS has a significant meaning. The NuviCam itself is probably the primary reason you're watching this video or you've purchased this device, and that is it has an integrated dash cam built into the GPS. Now, the LMT HD uh, stands for Lifetime Maps and Traffic, and the HD stands for HD digital traffic, meaning that you will get updated digital traffic signals to this GPS every 30 seconds, as opposed to the two minutes for the analog that you would get with a non HD traffic receiver. Now for me, the Garmin NuviCam here solved a very real problem. I have, I'm traveling a lot more for work and utilizing a company car. So I do have another Garmin GPS, uh, the 2599, but given that, you know, I'm directionally challenged, so having the GPS is good, but because I'm in the company car now, uh, I kind of kind of felt that it would be necessary to have a dash cam, knock on wood, should anything ever happen or I witness something and need to report it. Uh, having a dash cam would be very useful for that. I'm sure you've all seen dash cam videos of crazy things that happen. Uh, so having that was something that I was looking for, but I had limited space in the particular car that I'm utilizing for work. So I was looking for an integrated system. Uh, lo and behold, did a quick Google search. And what do you know, Garmin, uh, my preferred GPS company, did have a integrated uh, dash cam and GPS combo, which for me is perfect. So what you're looking at right now is going to be the overview of the Garmin Nuvi cam, uh, only because I tend to be very detailed and talk a lot about uh, things that I review. So over here, there'll be a playlist with the other portions of the review that I'll break out, uh, navigation, user interface, the dash cam itself, utilizing it. All that will be in a playlist that I'll put over there. So like I said, to start, this is just going to be the overview of the Garmin Nuvi cam. So why don't we start with the actual physical dimensions. What you're looking at is the entirety width of the Garmin being 7.2 inches with a height of 7.3 inches and a depth 0 0.6, but a depth over here where the camera is of 1.3 inches. Now that's the product dimension overall. If you're looking at just the screen, you're looking at a width of 5.4 with a height of 2.8, with a diagonal width of 6.1. So you can clearly see that while this is a large device, you do not get all of that in the screen. Speaking of the screen, the screen is a capacitive touch screen. So it's very similar to how you would have on a cell phone. It's glass, it uses static electricity. You can pinch to zoom on the map or just swipe through some of the areas. Uh, again, that'll be a little later in the user interface. Uh, the overall weight of the GPS is 11.3 ounces, and it has a internal non-removable rechargeable lithium ion battery, which has up to 30 minutes of life. And I say up to, because that's what Garmin says. I assure you, if you are using the camera and the GPS at the same time, and the camera is set for full 1080 HD video recording, uh, you're not getting anywhere near 30 minutes worth of use out of this. You're looking probably more at like 15 to 10 minutes. So consider this is something that you're going to keep plugged in all the time. And if you want to use the HD traffic, you will be keeping it plugged in anyway. So just keep that in mind. It comes with an internal solid state hard drive. So SSD or something similar to a flash drive, the things you plug into your computer, that has seven gigabytes of storage. Now, a lot of that's gonna be used up by your maps and firmware and all the stuff that it takes to run this device. So you're probably gonna to wanna to go out and get yourself a SD card to use for updating the maps. And I would recommend doing that to start off because while this has a similar map functionality to my Garmin Nuvi 2599, I did notice that the detail on the maps was much higher than on that GPS. And after one update, uh, when I first got it, I really needed to go out and get a card uh, to accommodate future updates. So I would recommend if you're purchasing this, you're gonna wanna pick up a card for that. 
So before I start taking you around the rest of the device, other features that this GPS can handle, and maybe this is something that you've heard about, but I'm just gonna throw it in the overview. Uh, because it has the dash cam, it utilizes the dash cam for other things that it can do, such as forward collision warning, lane departure warning, and something they call Garmin Real Vision, which is kind of a, a directional thing. Uh, personally, I find it more gimmicky than anything else. But again, that will be in the navigation portion of the videos over there. Uh, so I'm just throwing that out there. Uh, it also does voice command. It has Bluetooth. It can work with uh, Garmin's smartphone link. Again, more videos. And has their real directions, which is turn right at the stoplight or turn left at McDonald's. Uh, so those are interesting features, but you know, just putting them out there as part of the overview. So what we're going to do now is we're going to other parts of the GPS. Now the big part is at, around the back here. So the big thing is this, the camera itself. You'll notice that it's outlined in red and it does have horizontal movement but not vertical movement so you can only move it left to right but not up and down uh, over here you have a very nice speaker you'll notice that the back is made of this matte material plastic obviously but it uh, does not collect fingerprints that easily you have a nice big power button over there as opposed to in some of the older models of garmin where they put a sliver power button up here the top is made of shiny plastic you'll notice over here there is a button that is not the power button you're going to see that it's outlined in red similar to the camera that's letting you know that these options go together on the bottom i'll show you one other thing that's highlighted in red so that you know they all go together this is to actuate the uh, camera record feature now the camera does record all the time but if you want to save something you would push this button and again i'll explain that later in a separate video for dash cam Flipping it down to the bottom here, you'll notice that I was talking about, again, something else that's highlighted in red. This is a slot for a micro SD card that's used just for the dash cam recordings. Now the micro SD card can accommodate up to a 64 gigabyte class four or higher card. And it does ship with a eight gigabyte card, which was very nice because apparently when this GPS first came out, it only came with a four gigabyte card, and let's be honest, that was ridiculous. Over here you have a micro USB port, and this is so when you update the maps or firmware, you plug into this, and this one is a, another micro SD card slot, so you get two micro SD card slots. This one is for your maps. Uh, so if you're gonna update your maps and need more storage space, you get one of these. Again, it's similar to uh, capacity uh, to this one, so up to 64 uh, gigabytes. Now, one of the new things, that Garmin has with this particular model is this is a magnetic backing. So the GPS itself does not actually have a charging port on it. Instead, it uses this magnetic piece here, which is separate uh, and it locks in, you know, you have your connecting ports or uh, connections there and then your connections here, they clamp together and then you get connectivity through the two pieces. So you cannot charge directly through the GPS. Uh, you will notice that there are these little slits here. And if you look closely on this piece here, there are slits. So it does match up very nicely and solidly. You will notice that here is the mini USB port. Now that's something I want to stress to you. Notice mini port for charging and maps integration micro usb port for updating your maps so you have two different usb standards with this personally i find that a little weird to have two separate standards on one device because all that comes with this gps is a 19 inch micro usb cable for you know connecting it to your computer it does come with a five foot mini USB connection for traffic and charging in the car. And you will notice that it does have the built-in traffic receiver. So unlike the 2599, this one does not have integrated traffic uh, receiver. You have to have this separate portion, uh, but two different standards. Uh, really, I don't know why Garmin did that, but 
it, it is what it is. Just know that you'll have two separate cables. I also want you to notice down here where the two micro SD cards are, the one that's integrated for the dash cam itself sits a little more flushly than the one that you have for the map. So they are both seated and, and in there, but notice that they're both the same card and style. Uh, so you can see there's a red and then the gray and they sit, this one sits out a little further for the maps. So I just want you to be aware of that. Uh, it's not that it's not in there correctly. It's just that how it was designed. Now I did mention that this, that this GPS has voice commands. So over here, you will notice that there is a microphone. There is um, no ambient light sensor. So that's something I will touch on a little later, but it will dim the screen, but that's based on time, not light sensitivity because there is no light sensor on this. The last thing I wanna to touch on that's different and unique and part of this overview is the new Garmin suction mount. Now, I'm not sure if this is going to be a standard suction mount for all Garmins or if it's just because of the size of this Garmin that it required something different than your standard uh, ball joint Garmin mount. You can see uh, the, the difference. This is movable. Uh, so it is much beefier. And uh, as you can see, a wider surface space for the actual suction cup itself. Uh, so really, you know, this is your standard one, but this is the, the one that comes with your new V cam. Now, I will preface this saying, I have had this GPS sitting on the mount and it has not fallen off as of yet. Again, knock on wood, hope it doesn't. Um, it has a large surface space and I did stick the uh, plastic that comes with it back on it only because I didn't want to get cat hair all over it again. Uh, but what I notice is it's designed differently than the standard one. If you look at the standard one, you have this little toggle here and you clamp it down, pop it up. So you can move a GPS if it's still mounted to this, hypothetically, if it falls down or you need to readjust it, you just pop the clamp. The way that this one is designed, the clamp is up here now. And notice how and where it points to, right where the directional ball joint is, where your GPS is. So if you're trying to adjust the location of your GPS using this, you first have to take the GPS off, flick it down, readjust, clamp, put the GPS back on. There's no flicking it down and moving it. Now, this could just be because of the size of this GPS, but I want you to be aware of that. Uh, again, that portion is adjustable, but even in its lowest position, you may still have problems with this size GPS or you know, based on the type of car that you have. Uh, it does have this little bit down here for the uh, suction cup, even after it's loosened, you may need to use this. I have had to use this because like I said, it's a very good suction cup. Uh, so compared to the old mount. And really that's just about it for the overview of the Garmin Nuvi Cam. Now I am going to say, I'm probably gonna give you sticker shock now uh, and you may not even bother looking at some of the other videos. This is not by any means a cheap device. Garmin touts this as one of their top of the line GPSs. So with that in mind, you are going to be paying top dollar for the Garmin Nuvi Cam here. Uh, anywhere is from 400 to $300. I was able to get it for about uh, $298 on Amazon. E even for me, that was a bit much to pay, but I really, I really wanted the integration of a dash cam and a GPS instead of having two separate devices. So if you're considering that, I do recommend this. I if you can stomach that price tag, or perhaps by the time this video comes out or you're watching it, the price would have fallen a little bit but just know that, that that price tag might be a bit of a hindrance for this particular model. I love this model and I'm happy I got it, but that price tag, oof, it was, it was a bit much. So really, like I said, that's it for the overview. I will link over here uh, to the playlist with the other videos for this particular uh, GPS. And that's about it. I have been Wanderer001. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the area below. And as always, thanks for watching.